Hey, time for the lions. Tell them one story. Listen to the lion voice, yeah. Out. First, I want to just um, read what His Majesty say on um, religion and spirituality. While he was addressing President Radha Krishna, uh, and if I'm butchering that, please, I'll put up the name and the image and correct me in the comments. Um, but this is when he was this, uh, receiving an honorary doctorate from Haile Selassie University upon his visit to Ethiopia. And his Majesty was addressing it. This is what His Majesty says, glory to word, glory to sound, glory to the power, the most high. Today, more than ever before, man realizes the bond of unity that exists within the race. He is endeavoring to employ the accumulated knowledge and wisdom of the ages. He is employing modern science and technology. He is reaping the benefits, however limited, of political and economic unity. And to that extent, he is transcending the age-old barriers that have divided the race so long and is endeavoring to reflect on the welfare not only of himself and his immediate neighbor, but also on the welfare of the all of the human race. This endeavor is in harmony with the spirit of the mystics of ages gone by. In the mystic traditions of the different religions, we have remarkable unity of spirit. Whatever the religions may, they may profess, they are spiritual kinsmen. While the different religions in their historic forms bind us to limited groups, and militate against the development of loyalty to the world community, the mystics have always stood for the fellowship of humanity. So your excellency has taught us. And in an effort to carry out this teaching, and in an effort to carry out this teaching to pursue truth, to promote those bonds common to the human race, your excellency has dedicated your whole life to free the human race from superstition and fear that originate from ignorance and to enable him to transcend the apparent obstacles of race and religion and to help him to recognize the blood ties of the whole human race your excellency has labored to this generation so tormented between modern knowledge and ancient faith your scrupulous studies have pointed the way by which man may be saved from traditional superstition and modern skepticism his imperial majesty emperor Haile Selassie I, october 3rd 1965 and that speech to I is one of the reasons why you can see why Haile Selassie thought is beyond. Um, because it's, even though he's the defender of the Christian faith, he sees it's bigger than Christianity, it's bigger than Islam, it's bigger than uh, Buddhism. You know, it's about one almighty one people coming into unity of purpose for the betterment of humanity. This is the rising of heaven on earth. Now, there may be different paths, there may be different people with different ways that they look about the world. Because Zion does not mean the same, that everything is the same, or else it would not be heaven on earth if everything was the same. So we want things to be different, but everything must be good. Everything must be productive. Everything has a cause and a reason. So these are the things that um, we see with his Imperial Majesty Emperor the Selassie the first. I don't want to make the episode too long. Um, so we're gonna continue to talk about my journey into why Haile Selassie is the Almighty. We're gonna look at a few of the foundation scripture. Isaiah 9:6. We're gonna look at Jeremiah 23. We're gonna look at Psalm 68. Psalm 87 we're going to look at Revelation 5.5 5. and then we're going to look at uh, a few others but those are some of the foundation prophecy that we, um, you know in earlier Rastafari were utilized to, to make the connection between who Haile Selassie is again not everyone takes that route but we want to I'm, I'm explaining how I came to this conclusion.
Well, from to us, a son was born and a child was given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called the Wonderful, Counselor, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Then we called him Christopher I when he was born, rain fall from the sky. Then we called him Christopher I when he was grown in here, planes he fly. They call him Christopher I, a young break the chain, weep not, don't cry. Then we call him Christopher I, read your revelation, chapter 5, verse 5. Born near the city of Harar, the inspiration for Bob Marley's guitar. People crowd him like some big superstar. It no matter if a England or Cote d'Ivoire, no matter if you're brown or black like a tar. Highly Selassie, Sefi, and all tribal war. A time for Yada Mount Zion, fi drive solar car from the car straight to Zanzibar. Who we are? The sons of Christopher I. When he was born, rain fall from the sky. Christopher I. When he was grown in airplanes, he fly. Christopher I. The lion break the chain, weep not, don't cry. Christopher I. Read your revelation, chapter 5, verse 5.